If I were to do the thumbnail for this video over again, I would get myself up in like a, a Louis XIV garb and have, you know, I am the dictionary like that. Or maybe a uh, Judge Dredd outfit, you know, like I am the law, but I'm the dictionary. Well, uh, hey, Lucy, when you end up watching this to do the, uh, the edits, ideas. Hello, YouTube. Today, I think we should talk a little bit more about world building because we've been doing a bit of grammar, we've been doing a bit of vocabulary, and now I think we need to, to polish up the world building. And I have just the thing. I have just the thing. Okay, so where am I going to just put myself? I'm going to put myself off to the corner so we can talk about this. I have been working on some texts, some in-universe texts, for um, for Lenadilef and for we'll probably do a version in Eustamia as well. Maybe the originals in Eustamia, and I'll show it to you. Okay, so essentially, the in the Sakrat family we have a lot of focus on chickens, and I was thinking in the Kal family we could have kind of a focus on owls, and. For those of you who don't know, owls are are my favorite sort of meme animal. Um, whenever anyone finds this out, uh, next birthday, Christmas, etc., I get owl stuff, and I'm not complaining. So, um, owls all the way. Uh, so I figure we can't have world building go on and there not be owls involved in some way. So here is what I give to you, which is the sacred book. The sacred text, the Book of the Nine Owls, and here is an excerpt, and I'll read it to you. And the owls came, and they were nine, and they were wise, and they were knowing, and they saw the world, and they knew it was good, and they flew, and they flew, and they flew, and they flew all over the world, and they saw all that was in it, and they saw the people, and they knew them, and they were glad, and the nine owls flew to the nine corners of the world, and they saw nine suns in the sky. And they saw nine moons in the sky, and they saw nine uh, stars in the sky. So, I think we have we have a vibe going here. And then I have some some secondary sources that talk about this. So, the proverbs of the blessed ones of the owl are a collection of moral sayings that are meant to guide and instruct readers on how to live a good and virtuous life. Some of the proverbs include: "It is better to be wise than to be strong." "It is better to be good than to be rich." And it is better to be humble than to be proud. And there's also some history that I've been working on. The War of the False Owl is a conflict that takes place in the Book of the Nine Owls between the true owls and the false owls. The false owls are led by a creature called the Witch Owl, uh, and they seek to destroy the true owls and take over their world. The true owls are eventually victorious, but at great cost. The root cause, now, you know, here's the history essay version. The root cause of the War of the False Owl was the witch owl's desire for power and domination. Okay, that's like a, a C essay. The A essay is this. A more sophisticated analysis of the causes of the War of the False Owl would include the following factors. The witch owl's ambition and desire for power. The false owl's feelings of inferiority and resentment towards the true owls. And the true owl's refusal to submit to the witch owl's authority. So... You know, this, again, this is kind of like the basic version. So this is a C plus, maybe. Yeah, let's be generous, C plus. And I think this is this is an A minus because I think it, it, it does get at some of the root causes, but it only scratches the surface. And also, you know, this is sort of the false owl's feelings of inferiority and resentment towards the true owls. Okay, but let's go deeper. Where does that come from? Um, but still, pretty good essay. So, you know, I think you'd have to be a bit longer, but... Yeah. So essentially in the past, and I haven't really made up my mind as to actually if these are actual owls that are having this war, or these are just people who consider themselves owls or something like that. Um, but we have we have a, a whole history of sacred books, something very, very biblical seeming here uh, with all the ands that start the sentences. That's pretty typical. Um, we have maybe some some other texts that are not so canonical, not part of the Book of the Nine Owls, but sort of later, the Proverbs of the Blessed Ones of the Owl. 
and then there's a war in that's mentioned in the the text uh the book of the nine owls between the false owls and the true owls so what does this all mean for us today we're starting to weave together a tapestry if you will so the early history of lena Thyleff is going to be focused around this this um belief system or this um this at least this text the book of the nine owls which is something like a sacred text for them i'd imagine it comes from the eustamia um that would be the the language in which the text is written originally so in lena Thyleff, it might be a translation um and there's a very owl centric point of view later on Kranzlor speakers come and dominate the region and they have a much more chicken centric view of the world and so we have the great war of the owl and the chicken um something like that so this means that we need words for some of these things because we're going to be talking about owls a lot uh so that's going to be the next plan so we need to go back to our lexicon and we actually need to see if we've come up with a, a word for owl in protocol. I don't think we have. I feel like I would have remembered that. Owl. Nothing. Okay, so we need now a word for owl. And this is going to be a very important word that we're going to say a lot, so it should be, it should be a good one. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the proto-language, which we haven't... We haven't touched very much recently. Uh, do we have a, a phonology for this? Yeah, we do. Okay, here we go. So proto language is phonology. So we need an owl. Quain's saying the uh, the word for owl can should start with ch in Lenadilef. Is that something that we can manage? Given the Lenadilef sound changes, let's see. Let's just play around a little bit. Where does the ch come from in Lena Thylef? I have to ponder a bit. I have to look at the sound changes. Yeah, it's not going to be so easy to read this. And you know what? Don't even, don't even look at this. It's just going to give you a headache. Um, let's just play around and see what we can do. So let's go over to Lexergy and see if we can come up with something that will have a, a ch at the start. A yell. Well, that that is not what I expected. Al. Hmm. I think we we get rid of the um, fricatives those those fricatives intervocalically, so it's very hard to come up with a ch at the start. Yeah. Let's see. Let's look at yeah. Let's let's try this uh, suggestion of Taga's quanamo. What does this look like in Lenadilef? And then let's get up another another one and we can see what it looks like in Eustamia. So that is going to be fun. Okay. Sound changes. So Quanamo. This gives us Quanam. And Quanamo into Eustamia gives us Quanamo. Ah, the camera's always blocking the results. Uh, how am I going to do this? Where am I going to put myself so that I am not blocking anything important? Maybe if I just scooch down. Maybe down here. Maybe that works. Yeah. Okay. So we get Guanam and Kanamu. So that would look like, and then if we, we did the whole, the whole paradigm, oops. So we get, oh, the suffering, the suffering. Okay. We get, yeah, I think there's, there's a, there's an error with some of these, um, with one of the sound changes I put in recently. So why don't I just, these are the middle and the dial of sound changes. So let's just. Let's just get rid of them for now and take us to old Lenadilef. There we go. Quanam, quenamoy, quenamonum, quenamam. So that would look like this in Lenadilef. So it would look like quanam, 
quenum and quenum. And that would be an O stem. All uh, right. <laughs> I don't dare put myself in the center of the screen. Can you imagine? All right. So maybe this could be our word for owl. Because I like kanamu in Lenadai left as well, uh, in uh, Yustami as well. Quanum. I like that. I like that. Okay, echoed words. We are going. We, let's talk a little bit about how verb stems work in in Lenadaila briefly. So what will? So they're essentially, and this is a, this is actually an incomplete set of paradigms. But we have various kind of conjugation classes depending on. Ooh, let's go over here, and now we run into the problem of me having me in the lower left. Um. We have various conjugation classes depending on the final vowel in protocol. So although you can't really tell the difference between ton, umas, maslach, and soimen in in Lenadilif, they actually all ended in different vowels in protocol. And then we have different different inflected forms. So the predicative form when the verb is used as a predicate. So something like I I run. Um, the continuative form, which is something like and I run. Uh, the past form, I ran. The negative form, I don't run. Note that the negative form is used instead of the past form. So the past negative is kind of a question as to how, how that's done. Um, we need to use auxiliaries in order to do that. Uh, the presumptive, which is something like um, which is something like I probably run or I will run or even I believe let's run. Uh, the conditional to, which is um, a counterfactual conditional. So if I ran, so, such and such would happen. The attributive, this is when it's used as a, an adjective. So running, uh, the, run, the person who runs, the running person. A substantive, this is like a verbal noun. So running is fun. I like to run. Conditional one, which is um, which is like, if I run, I get tired. So it's it's not a counterfactual conditional. Um, it's or it's like whenever I run, I get tired. It's like that. And sorry, you can't see the names of these. Uh, suffering. Conditional one, the concessive. Um, even though I run, I never seem to lose any weight. You know that would be an example sentence there. And, uh, or even though I run, I can't get away from these dogs that are chasing me. Um, imperative, just the order, run. Uh, okay, so there we go. Those are the different uh, verb forms that we inherit from protocol. But because of the different stress patterns in the protocol forms, these, um, these end up looking very different in Eustamia, or in old Eustamia at least. So we get roughly three patterns that occur. We get a pattern when the green pattern, which is only found in the predicative form. So for example, uh, in the ver verb to shine, uh, we have mazlach. Um, so uh, that's the green form. And then we have other forms like the blue form which a lot of the other types of, uh, a lot of the other ver uh, verbal endings take. So they, they make the verb show up in that blue form. So mazlach is the blue form of this verb, mazlach. Then there's also an, a, an orange form, mazlach. Uh, and that is, actually, I believe it should be mazlach. Now that I think of it, because they all have that in common. Um, anyway, so Maslaga, which then takes the, which if you're talking about the past, it has to be in this gr this orange form. So these are what we then write down here in the order one, two, three, which corresponds to um, green, blue, orange. So hopefully that's some kind of clarification on that. It's actually really, really complicated. And as a result, it doesn't last very long. 
and it um, it gets regularized into something that just doesn't change the stem at all. So, enoch, enorif, enorit, enorin, enorish, enorik, enoris, enorik, enorivis, enorival, enorif. Ta-da! <laughs> um, so that's how the verb stems in Lenadilef work. All uh, sparse, all fricatives in Lenadilef are voiced when surrounded by voiced sounds on both sides. So you get mazlach, but mazlarof. Uh, so in practice, that means that something that's voiceless. So here's another example: umas, a mazuf, a mazaish. Um, what's another example? Month, mandoich, mandonam, mandof, or, um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's it. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, the, the students of the old Linda Lyle, of course, are, are suffering, uh, because of this. Okay, so, cool. So we are... Now at the point where we've got a, a workable word for owl, quantum. And let's let's do the work on the evil. Um, just so that we don't have this hanging over our heads. So sasuka is the root. So let's let's put it through the verb form generator. Sasuka. And this gives us Sezak. Oh yeah, this is a really weird one. <laughs> this is really weird. Sezak, saruf, suk, such. Yeah, I don't even know what to, what to say about this one. This is super weird. How are we going to? How are we gonna? I just wanna. I don't know. Let's take the time to actually write this down. So. So let's just assume that we have, let's take this over here and let's just put down these forms. So Sezak, Seruf, Suk, Such, Sereish, Serok, Suks, Suk, Sereish, I need my special E. Serai this. Serai no. Serayvel. And souk. So when we look at this, we put our nice colors on. We actually see that there's more irregularity than we're used to because the negative is such and not something like suchen or suchen anyway regardless sezek sir sezek sir suk that's the that's the entry so sezek sir suk okay why does this um why does this irregularity happen it's because we have intervocalic uh, frication and at the time when so this is what i believe happens we have intervocalic frication in lenadilev at the time that um the let's go back to the forms so at the time that the orange forms um at the time of that inter of that frication the orange forms do not have this k as intervocalic, but this orange form does. Then that drops out and the, the relevant vowel drops out, leaving an n here, which also gets deleted because suchne is not suchne, is not uh, consonant with the uh, the norms of Lenadilef syllable structure, no pun intended. And so we get such. That's, I believe, what happened. Old le, hashtag old Lena Le of Summer. It's happening. It's happening. Okay. Um, yeah. So now we can say evil owl. 
uh, which would be, well, how would we say evil owl? We'd have to look at the word for evil. Oh, this is, by the way, a schwa stem. Sezik, sach, sach, suk. We then look at, in the grammar, what do we use for attributive, essentially like attributive adjectives? The attributive form, which is suks. So we then say evil owl. Okay, I'm lost. Evil owl is suks quanum. Suks quanum. Like that. That's kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> Galactic sand is. Uh, pay no attention to any relationship between what's happening today and what's happening on Thursday. There is no relationship whatsoever. <laughs> as far as we, yeah, we need to get uh, we need to get Lena Dyloff on Duolingo stat. All right. So the other thing we wanted to do was talk about the um, the true owl and the false owl. The true owls and the false owls, rather. Uh, the two sides in the war of the false owl. So we need a word for true and a word for false. And I don't believe that we're going to have any help. Let's take a look. Now, where is our proto lexicon? Here we go. True. False. Nothing. So we have a blank slate. What are we going to do? Let's get our uh, let's get our proto sound system up and let's make a word for true and false. We go. There is a word for good. So let's find it. Sofa. Sofa is good. So maybe we can have some semantic drift because you've been clamoring for semantic drift. I've wanted to give it to you, so let's do it. Let's uh, take the word for good and turn it into a word for true. So sofa, sofa rather. <sighs> I'm having such trouble finding things in this spreadsheet. It's because I've got so many spreadsheets and so many tabs and well, you don't need to hear my problems. So since this is a state of verb, we'll put it through this. Um, originally, this is going back a ways, sofa in protocol was a dynamic stem verb. What does that mean? That means that it actually has a slightly different structure than, has different endings than the others. Now they don't end up mattering in Lenadilef because final vowel qualities get obliterated, so we don't have to worry too much about it. All I will say is that, yeah, all I'll say is, Oh my goodness, I have to look at this. This is actually too much. This whole like stem class system from pre-protocol, this is too much. It's just, uh, okay. So I have to figure out which one of these are going to have a uh, and which one are going to have uh. So in stem A, we have full grade in the root, so a. Uh, so, so far, in stem B and C, we have reduced grade in the root, so we have so fa. So, which ones are B and C? Continuative is B, so so fa hupa, so fa ta, C, so so fa ahue, so fa o qua. So, all of these other ones have schwas. If you're not following this part, don't even bother because it's just. It, there's no reason for me to have done this so complicatedly. Um, it just, it is what it is and it has to be respected. Uh, so let's see what it comes up with. Okay, sof, savuf, socht, soven, savaish, savok, soch, sok, savedach. Okay, so we have a, a nice sof, savu, or just sov. Yeah, just sov. And then for the last one, we have save. So this means true. 
Uh, and this comes from sofa, meaning good. Phew. Yeah, yeah. Quain's right. The remember, remembering the reasons why this came into being was because I wanted to make compounds in in Eustamia come from, or I wanted to make longer words in Eustamia come from compounds in protocol. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the ablaut is becoming annoying. I think what we have to do is just say enough's enough. We are going to have ablaut for common verbs and common nouns, and that's it. So maybe we'll push back the the reorganization of the ablaut system even into old Lenadilev. So, you know, feather will always be naiva because it's not high frequency enough to be a regular. I think that's what we might have to do. So, but the point is we now have a way to say the false owls, which is sohs. So we have sohs quanum. This has, HS cluster is interesting. Sohs quanum, the false owls. Or false owl, because plural isn't a thing that is morphologically marked in this language. And I feel like the last thing we should do, and then we should put in a YouTube break, is figure out how to say the war of the false owl. So we need a word for war. Let's make this a fun one. I think we can probably give it something like, I don't know. Uh, let's take let's take suggestions from the chat. Let's we need a root for war. Chele. Okay. Thank you, echoed words. Chele. What is this going to turn into in Lenadilef? I wonder. Shale. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, you're right, right, right. Quain, you're right. Uh, this is actually the word of the true owl. So we need to come up with a word for false as well. Um. Okay, so we could just call it untrue or something. <laughs> uh, sorry, owl. I miss. I I I called the a false owl a true owl, which means that I am not one of the blessed of the owl, and will surely perish. Sad. Okay, so we have the word shale, and let's just say we're not doing we're not doing any nonsense for this one. This is a shale. It means war. It comes from chele, meaning war. It's an estem, but it's actually a regular, so it's just a regular verb, a regular noun. It's a noun. This is a verb. This is a noun. Verb, noun, verb. Okay, good. Um, yeah, we all perish in the end, don't we? None of us can be true to the true owl in all things. Okay, so let's let's figure out false. So if we have so far being going to true, maybe we can have sofa meaning false. Let's just see what happens. So s is our 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 un or bad prefix in protocol. <laughs> so it's almost identical. Sezef. So what if we had says if as a regular verb Ooh, what happened there we go false <sighs> false and this comes from ungood says if hmm that could work sofa has a negative form already it has a morphologically, like a, a an inflected negative form, but it I'm talking about a derivational negative form. All right, sezef. So that could be our word for false. And so going back to the regular mm, attributive, which is us, so sezefus. So then the war of the false owl would be something like let's go all the way down the war of of the false owl 
would be something like war false attributive owl dative because we're having this cool date of a possession thing i just want to put it in um okay so what would this look like this is backwards so shale says of says of us quantum except we have to make quantum into dative which is going to be where is it there it is um blue form anum or blue form actually what is it it's a ooh it's an o i don't know i'm <laughs> i'm getting tired <laughs> Friends, I'm getting tired. Oh, it's an O stem. Okay, so let's look at O stem. So that is going to be here, which is onum. So the blue stem quinamonum. And then we ask ourselves, are we happy with this? Shale sesavus, shale sesavus quinamonum. This is getting there, but I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, dative is, um, it's, a case that is used for the uh, something like the recipient of a, a verb like to give. So I gave the book to the owl. Um, the to the owl would be something that you might expect to be dative. That's um, one thing that's interesting is that in many languages the dative starts to become a possessor. Um, so, shale uh, sesavus conamonum. I feel like we're kind of there, but I think we need a bit more work. But I need to just have a little Zen moment so I can clear my head and get the, the powers of focus back. So I will take this opportunity to say goodbye to YouTube um, and come back soon. We're going to hear all about the Book of the Nine Owls, the War of the False Owl, and maybe even if we're lucky, the Proverbs of the Blessed Ones of the Owl. And as the owl said, it is better to be wise than to be strong. So... On that note, I will leave you for today. See you next time, YouTube.